So just the other day, gamers thought that they had a victory royale with Stellar Blade, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid to report some bad news today, because you see, today Insomnia Games came out and they say that we need more diversity in the game. Yeah, yeah, like the video if you think Woke is bad for video games and it destroys games, just like the video if you think Woke is good. Woke is good, Woke is good. And before I show you guys this video, man, this is absolutely insane, okay? So Elon Musk weighs in on Assassin's Creed Shadows, uh, featuring a potentially... I cannot say these words on YouTube this early on in the video, that, that's YouTube, right? Samurai as the main character, DEI kills art. And yeah, he responded by saying DEI kills art because apparently Ian said, should Ubisoft delay Assassin's Creed Shadows in response to widespread backlash over the game? Now, those of you that, before I show you the video, now those of you that are unsure about what's going on, some of the black communities mad with it and upset with it, the Japanese community is upset with it, not everybody. Some people are cool with it, some people are fine with it, which, I mean, everybody has the right uh, right to having an opinion that's perfectly fine but majority agrees with the fact that this is a Japanese game or a game not made by Japanese but a game that's gonna be set in Japan with a feudal Japan setting so a lot of people are like hey we want diversity we cool with it but we don't want forced DEI we want J a Japanese male protagonist some are also saying, hey, Yasuke, that's good, have Yasuke in the game, but also have a Japanese male protagonist as well. Therefore, we have a Japanese male protagonist, you're not gonna disrespect the Japanese culture, and you can also have Yasuke, which is a rare, rare event, rare man, he was a rare man in the actual uh, feudal Japan, right? Some are saying he was a samurai, other people are saying, nah, he was just a retainer, people are fighting with that. Uh, we, we have talked about that previously, right? So, uh, yeah, that's where the conversation ended, but wait, there is more! Now, they have also turned him uh, gay as well. Uh, yeah, and also that chick, you know, the Japanese uh, protagonist, uh, not protagonist, but, or maybe perhaps, that, that female Japanese uh, character that we're also getting, a female, she's also gay. Uh, they have confirmed that, not my opinion, that's what they're saying. So Elon Musk comes out, responds by saying, DEI kills art, and fast forward to now, we're apparently hearing this, roll it. Boy, is this video going to be going into some weird topics today. Love I have it, a question for you. Do you think gaming today is pandering too much? Do you think there's far too much emphasis on gender and politics in gaming? Well, according to someone at Insomnia Games, there's simply not enough of it, and we need to yeah. do more if you can believe that. Beyond this, I will also talk about Neil Druckmann and The Last of Us, as well as Stellar Blade giving the players the win and more. To begin, let's okay. start with this insane article from Dual Shockers that's titled, We need to pull every lever we have. Insomniac's narrative director discusses lack of LGBTQ content <sighs> in video games. What? So Dual Shockers spoke to- What? Nah, say you swear to God, bro. Bro, every game has it though. You feel what I'm saying? Like, every game has that representation. It happens to just be that Stellar Blade didn't have, and y'all got so mad because it didn't have the representation. Representation. And listen, everybody loves diversity. Diversity is beautiful. Diversity is good. Diversity is good. Diversity is good. Even I agree with diversity, okay? But forced diversity is not what we want, bruh. Forced diversity is bad, bro. It divides people for literally no reason. It kills art, bruh. Like, yeah, Abby, Brock Lesnar looking guy, cheeks getting clapped in 4K with the ray twashing, that's fine, but you'd Abby Zilla, uh, that's fine. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. But like, Stellar Blade Eve should also be considered fine, but she was not. She was censored. Uh, now she apparently got uncensored, but not fully. You feel what I'm saying? That was the only game to not have uh, uh, the representation. But, but uh, yeah, yeah, and, and you know, the funniest thing here is that she, she is Asian, so it still had diversity, but was anybody mad? No! Because people are cool with diversity when it makes sense, though. You feel what I'm saying? Like, everybody's cool with diversity, it's just the forced DEI crap that people have a problem with, and rightfully so. And, and, and now they're saying that, <laughs> game needs more diversity because game lacks the representation. Every game got that representation, my G. What are we to Mary talking? Kenny, who's the narrative director of the upcoming Marvel's Wolverine game, which already tells me that the game will likely be cooked into oblivion when it comes to identity politics. Love which it, saddens me it. greatly since I've wanted a new Wolverine <laughs> game for years and yet I'm likely going to over. get super pandering game. Yeah, Wolverine, it's over, guys. It's Joe over. I'm so yeah. Yeah, it's Joe over. But is it gonna be like super woke? 
Or is it gonna be like a little bit walk like that Spider-Man 2 situation, right? Because yeah, they change MJ. Perfectly good looking chick to uh, what we saw happen with Spider-Man 2 if you've seen that. Otherwise, it was a good game. You know what? Credit where it's due. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be objective with it. Spider-Man 2 was a good game, minus that walk crap, right? Like and the funniest thing here is that they made it in a way where at the end of the game, right? Spider-Man, Spider Peter Parker would have died if MJ didn't save him. We're talking about a superhero game. In another story, totally makes sense. You know, like your partner like saves your ass. Bro, that's beautiful, bruh. That's beautiful. You save her, she saves you. Hey, that's beautiful, right? That's beautiful. Yeah. But like Spider-Man, that's a superhero. So you're saying, you're literally saying that superhero would have died if she didn't save him. She ended up receiving that Venom punch though, but she still still survived after that. Crazy, yeah, crazy, Aim crazy. Instead. According to Mary Kenny of Insomniac, video games are not diverse enough. Which for anybody who actually <sighs> plays video games and keeps up with current news, we all yeah. have to ask, what the hell is this person smoking exactly? Because everywhere I look in a Western sense, especially, all I see is LGBT representation literally yeah. everywhere. There's laws put in place where if you misgender people, you can be thrown yeah. in jail. There's pride. Uh, welcome to Canada, everybody. It's true. It's true. Uh, and I'm also in Canada. It, it is true. It is true. It is true. Events. They have an entire month to be pandered to in June by companies across the board, too. There's so much LGBT representation these days, it's ridiculous. How many newer Western main games have completely replaced their character creators with stuff like body type 1 or 2 instead of male or female? The answer is yeah. all of them, by the way. Even Japanese Holy. games are adhering to that idea, and the terms male or female, uh -oh. they just don't exist apparently anymore. Just looking at the highlights of this article is crazy. Like, listen to this. LGBTQ gamers still don't feel seen in the gaming industry. Insomniac Associate Narrative Director Mary Kenny emphasizes the importance of design- Bro, at this point, they're never gonna see themselves, bro. Like, bro, bro like, so Abyzilla was not enough, man. He got pounded in 4K, bro. What else more do you want, bro? Yeah, Last of Us 3, we're gonna do it, like, bigger and better. Uh, it, it's gonna be 8K ray tracing. Okay, how about that? But like, damn, homie, <laughs> what we talking, man, what we talking, not enough, bro, y'all be getting all the representation, where's my representation at, where's my, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, not a big, I'm a, I'm a small brown man with a BBC, Bruh. right, I, I, and listen, man, any black homies watching, any, where my black homies at, though, like, y'all got some of the biggest BBCs, right, like, and that's a compliment, that's a compliment, I, I have a BBC, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I have a brown version of a BBC, I don't have a black version, right so listen i'm a minority all right i need my representation bro i need my representation can a brown man perhaps get his representation representation and before you say nah you're white bro you're white nah bro i'm i'm south asian bro like uh um, no memes i'm pakistani bro i'm south asian dog i'm south asian you know what i'm saying like south asian yeah gang gang bro south asian i'm so i i dead sm some people don't believe it when i say it i am bro i'm brown bro I'm brown ethnically. Ethnically, I I I am. I did SM. So I need my representation, bro. Finding games that make players feel accepted and important. The gaming industry has a long way to go in terms of queer representation, despite the significant number of LGBTQ plus players. How the hell are LGBTQ players not seen in today's media? They're everywhere in everything. Almost any commercial I see has LGBTQ representation. Every show too. Especially in the Western sense, you have flags of pride and more scattered literally everywhere. Like, come yeah. on now. This just confirms what I've been saying since- Just a couple more days till June, everybody! Forever, which is that you can never appease these people ever. It's impossible. You could give them the entire world, and then they complain you didn't also give them the moon or Jupiter. Like, yeah. you can't appease these sorts of groups, and it's already gotten to the point of borderline ridiculousness already. One in the comments if you want your representation. Everybody that's watching this video, I know you want to be- uh, be field or probably not be field uh, you want to be seen you want to feel like you have been seen you want to feel like you've been heard one in the chat if you need your representation too yeah you need your yeah, 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 yeah. Rep, yeah, yeah. you need your representation let me know man like the video if you if you want to <laughs> have your rep, yeah, yeah. To go beyond this is financial destruction for these companies. Need I remind you, Mary Kenny was one of the prime defenders of Sweet Baby Inc. back in March when the whole Gamergate 2 thing happened. There was an article from that park place back in March about it, here's what it said. Marvel's Wolverine Associate Narrative Director Mary Kenny attempts to defend Sweet Baby Inc. by gaslighting readers. readers. <gasps> here's Mary Kenny, the person who says we must pull all the levers representation said about Sweet Baby back then, and I quote, 
Some of you don't seem to understand how narrative consulting on games works, but don't worry, I do. Yes, this is about Sweet Baby because I've worked with that team and they're one of the finest in the business. It starts with dev teams have an idea. Maybe they already have an outline of their story and a core gameplay loop. Maybe they've got a whole script and a playable Maybe. build. Either Maybe. way, something is missing. Could be any number of things. A character feels underbaked. Maybe a whole faction. Maybe. The backstory of a map has weak sauce world building. And no one on the team has time to do the research and brainstorming to make it cool. Maybe the dev team has gotten a ton of notes from publishers and executives on things that aren't working in the game. Maybe the notes are all internal. The team knows something is wrong, but not how to identify or fix it. Wherever you are in development, and whenever the notes are coming from, the problem is the same. Something's wrong. And the team can't figure out how to fix it. That's when you call Sweet Baby Inc. This next part is key, because some of you seem really confused. Narrative consultants yeah. do not get final say. And they don't override the core dev team and leads. It doesn't get into the game if we don't approve it. They consult, they do research, pitch ideas, give feedback, and maybe even write scripts. But none of that gets into the game unless the core dev team agrees with it. I'm going to keep saying that because it's key. Sweet Baby is not, nor is any consulting group coming into rec games. They're helping smooth out plots and deepen characters. They ease the burden on the core narrative team. They're additive in every way. And if the dev team disagrees with them on something, the dev team doesn't take the note. It really is that simple. So no, Sweet Baby- uh, I'll just make it simple. I'll just make it simple. So they're saying uh, Wolverine, uh, they think that lack of uh, representation and Wolverine game needs it. You, you guys can just, you know what? First of all, just change that Wolverine's uh, main character's uh, gender. Just make her, make him a sister. You know, make him a sister. Yeah, uh, hundred percent representation right then and there, bro. J just do that. At this point, bro, like, just do it, bro. Just, just do it, bro. Yeah, just do it. He did not kill your game. Of course, they had nothing to do with the layoffs. They gave notes, pitches, advice, and research. The studio made the final call on what went in the game. If you have beef, it's with it, us. Keep it, it with us. I'm so lucky to have worked with that team. I hope to do so again. I hope asshats don't drive out some of the most talented, passionate people we've got. End quote. So according to Mary Kenny, who again thinks there isn't enough LGBT representation and everything already, she also thinks that Sweet Baby is a godsend when it comes to video games, and she also says that Insomniac will work with them in the future. Remember that in terms of Insomniac anyway, Sweet Baby was directly involved with Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man 2. Sweet Baby Inc. is godsend. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it is over. It is over, guys. It's never been more over than it is right now, man. It's Joe over. It is and I think as time has gone on, many players can agree that Spider-Man 2's story, especially in its world, it felt worse and underbaked compared to the 2018 game. Yeah. Peter Parker was made weaker at certain story moments for exactly. no other reason so that Miles and MJ could step up and take leading roles. Yeah. Peter isn't even the one to save New York City in the end of the game either. It's Miles who ends up becoming the main Spider-Man going forward for Insomniac's Universe 2. They even confirmed that. <gasps> and you gotta have brain damage if you think Sweet Baby won't be involved with Wolverine in any way, because again, oh, Mary is. Kenny here is the associate- And look at like MJ, bro. Like She got 20 pounds of testosterone shot right there, booster, 20 uh, yeah, 20 tons booster right after as well crazy man it, it is insane and mg she looked perfectly fine in the first game so they purposely changed the character face as well they also did change the the spider-man not miles uh, but peter parker uh, face as well F okay why why he looked fine though and she also looked fine in the first spider-man game but you clearly see the difference so they, they don't want to make a new franchise new game you guys can make a new game right why ruin already existing games though you feel what I'm saying? And they, MJ face is the biggest uh, uh, difference that we saw, right? Yeah, Peter Parker, yeah, people like whatever. Miles look fine. But MJ, like, holy crap, holy crap. Like, they change her massively, massively. He had narrative director on Wolverine, right? Like, look at that, holy crap, bro. Like, this is insane. And, and listen, if you're part of LGTV, though, like, nothing but live, okay? I, I got no problems with you guys, but if you're, like, part of LGTV, just think about it. Just try to think critically here, okay? Like, they are designing their characters in such an ugly way. They think they're pleasing you guys, but indirectly, or I should say directly, they're sending out a message that you guys are ugly. 
I'm not the one saying that. They are the ones literally doing it. Just ask yourself this. Why? Why every character that is like, of course, Abby Zilla, right? Abby Zilla, Abby Zilla, which everybody, oh, everybody loves him. You got Lara, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, right? Like, she looked amazing, right? She looks stunning and brave. Like, the real stunning and brave. And now she looks stunning and brave, right? Just ask yourself this right i got none against you guys right uh but but if you're a part of that community you need to ask them you don't you need you don't want to ask that in the comments here you gotta directly talk to these companies and be like yo okay i'm getting my representation but why my representation is always ugly right so because they're implying that you guys are ugly i don't think you guys are ugly i don't think you guys are ugly right why are they implying that you guys are ugly again i can do this all day you you know this so this is another representation you guys got and uh look at that just another ugly chick why just uh, yeah critically ask yourselves that they they are literally implying that you guys are ugly which is just pathetic absolutely pathetic now which of all the characters to pick why would you go for wolverine it's so bizarre to me since canonically wolverine is the most straight character ever he's not gay yeah. at all <laughs> oh well uh he gonna be he gonna be in the next one oh absolutely assassin's creed as well yeah now he's gonna be too he would also likely be the most against woke weirdos out of any of the x-men if we're being real if wolverine actually existed and you told him to respect your pronouns he would just headbutt you and then light a cigarette and walk away yet this character is basically falling into a basin of rainbow colored piss with insomniac and i genuinely have no faith that the game's story or anything will be good Sure, the gameplay might be fine, it is Insomniac, but the story, yeah. you gotta be kidding me. And I yeah. 100%... Uh, this is what I like about Endymion, at least he's objective with it. He's, yeah, I, I also do believe the gameplay is gonna be good. I think the game is, in general, objectively, it's gonna be good. But the story elements of it might be forcefully changed for no other reason than force dei with the help of sweet baby ink and for the for the sake of representation, for the sake of representation. Yeah, man, like, why, bro? why dog like that's that's just genuinely sad y'all suckers can make a new game i feel like that hogwarts legacy did it well hogwarts legacy did have representation even though like seconds were still mad with the game you know seconds still try to boycott the game you remember when that happened but they still had uh, a transgender representation in uh in hogwarts legacy once again the representation was ugly so they they made the character ugly so again you guys gotta ask them uh if you're part of the lg uh lgtv crowd like you gotta ask them why is my representation always uglified you need to seriously ask that because they're implying that you guys are ugly i don't think you are but they think that you are so ask them that but here's the thing though they had representation in that hogwarts legacy game and I, yeah they made a new character which which was fine uh so not yeah not many people nobody literally was mad except for the the uh the the wokies percent expect wolverine to be sidelined for x23 his female clone daughter in either this upcoming game or a sequel Apparently, according to leaks, Mr. Sinister is the main villain of this Wolverine game, which all but confirms that Insomniac is going to do exactly what I think they will. Uh -oh. Mr. Sinister, in case you don't know, he's all about genetics and creating the perfect beings out of the DNAs of other mutants. Oh, he did it with crap. Jean Grey when he kidnapped her, and then he made Madeline Pryor, which Cyclops had a baby with. She's Jean's clone. And that's how Cable gets born. I guarantee freaking to you. Mr. Sinister is going to be hunting Wolverine down in order to get his DNA to make yeah. X-23 a thing. She will either be playable in this first game or second, and by the second, I at least I guarantee she will become the main character, just like how Miles oh, is with Peter. They will yeah. lure you in with the strong, independent, dee no need, no man. Yeah, they're gonna do it. Absolutely, I see it. <laughs> a straight white male legacy character that people <laughs> actually want to play as. They'll get you comfortable and all nice, they'll give you what you want for a bit until they pull the reg from underneath you, and then they replace your legacy hero with their diverse replacement that does the exact same thing they do, except they're not white males, so they're instantly better in the eyes of these developers. And I unironically expect Wolverine to look X-23 in the eyes like Peter did to Miles in Spider-Man 2, and say, why would this world ever need me when it has you? Like, you know it's going to happen. Look it's into over. your hearts, you know it to be true, they're just using brands we actually love and then replacing them with boring alternative characters. This is going to happen. Sweet Baby will be attached to Wolverine, and I think Insomniac is so confident that they will still sell well because yeah. of the IP and, you know, Wolverine and X-Men being a thing that they'll even put... Yeah, Wolverine, Batman, Spider-Man, all of these superhero games. And you, you remember that Avengers game, right? It was considered to be the worst Avengers game, but it still, I believe, sold well. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, Avengers is such a big... It's so big with Marvel, right? So big. You would think that they would have all the money in the world. And they did have all the money in the world. But still, the game turned out to be trash. I mean, some people still enjoyed it. Whatever. Subjectively, you can enjoy it and that's fine. But, you know, knowing how big of a name Marvel and Avengers is, they still ruined that. But guess what? The game still sold well. So, point here is that Wolverine is likely going to sell well because of the name. And Insomniac is a good dev team. Minus all of this, it's a good dev team. Nah, I'm not going to, like, take credit away from them just because of this crap. I'm not going to stoop down to their level. Uh, it, yeah, I, I mean, if nowadays it's like you hit one thing and you give it zero. I'm not going to do that. But, but like you, you know it's uh, it's coming like you, you know like that game is gonna sell well you know like wolverine the main act, main protagonist is i don't think guys he's gonna be a uh, straight man i don't think he is high. he is but i don't think he's gonna be though sweet baby's logo on the box somewhere is a big f you to everyone mary kenny and dual shockers discuss the glad gaming report as well that came out recently glad by the way it stands for gay and lesbian alliance against defamation <sighs> basically they're an organization that protects and pushes anything that benefits their group which i mean yes any organization is like that but for context that's what glad is anyway their new report they say that around 70 percent of players are lgbt which now is up from 10 percent in 2020 here's more of what glad said in their report and i quote Glad's finding that 70% of active gamers are LGBTQ, and the growth from 10% of active gamers being LGBTQ from Nielsen's Games 360 study in 2020 proves their tremendous influence on the gaming industry. The study shows that for LGBTQ gamers, a safe and inclusive environment goes beyond the game itself, with nearly 70% indicating they are less likely to buy from a studio with a history of mistreating LGBTQ workers. So you're saying 30%... Is the the straight normal crowd? Is that what you're saying? Seventy percent is. How are you getting the data? Okay, if seventy. Okay, you know what? Let's for a second. Let's believe this story. If this is true, then the world is world about to collapse, bro. Population about is about to collapse. Yeah, in the coming uh, in the coming years, population is about to collapse. The scale and growth of LGBTQ gamers is significant. Notably, the percentage of LGBTQ gamers is even higher among younger age groups with 23 to 28 percent. Because they are the ones that have been targeted by this and you guys have successfully able to confuse them uh, about stuff. This is why y you ask like a college goer nowadays here in the West, like, hey, define a woman, what a woman and what a man is. They're like, <laughs> you, you see them visibly just like searching for the answer and they cannot they don't even know right a simple answer would be like yeah my mama my mama she a woman my mama you know yeah that that's like a simple answer in a nutshell but yeah they got everybody confused and this works on the younger generation the younger generation is getting indoctrinated if you're an older folk watching this video yeah they can never get you bro you, you feel what i'm saying they're never gonna be able to convince you otherwise who they're gonna be able to uh, able to convince younger people programming programming just like how a computer needs a programming whether it's like windows ox or linux uh, linux is that how you say it? yeah just like how like you program the computer right in the very beginning it's simple as that bro so a kid doesn't know like anything better of course he's a kid bro like what what the hell he should be like playing around he should be learning a b c d's one two three is just simple and basic stuff they don't need to learn this crap but of course if they indoctrinate them uh and, and, and their goal is to confuse them at an early age and hey guess what they're very successful right now so and makes of sense. gamers under 35 identifying as lgbtq the percentage of LGBTQ people in gaming far surpasses that of the general population according to Gallup's 2022 survey. Although Gallup only surveyed respondents over the age of 18, our survey sample was between people ages 13 to 55 years old. They conservatively estimate that 7.2% of American adults are not cisgender and or heterosexual. Bruh. Similarly, Bruh. Gallup's most recent data indicates that Gen Z adults have the highest percentage of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender respondents over 18, which is at 19.7%. Holy. LGBTQ active gamers overall report similar levels of dedication to games as non-LGBTQ gamers in terms of average hours played and money spent. One point of divergence is that LGBTQ gamers play significantly more it's on over. mobile platforms than non-LGBTQ gamers. It, it, it's never been so over than it is now. Guys, I don't know if you guys were able to check this video out or not. This video is going viral. Uh, yeah, check it out. Check it out. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. If you already seen it, then check out the video on the left.